This is old Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to give you our review of... The, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man. The, the in re- IMAX. In IMAX. It's sort of IMAX screen because actually if you... In, in reality, we went to the midnight screening. It doesn't cost that much more to go to the IMAX versus the regular 3D screen. Yeah, and we saw it in IMAX 3D. So anytime we have the opportunity to see a movie that we're reviewing in IMAX 3D, that's what we do. Yeah, and um, in my case, I got to see it at a discount. So <laughs> <laughs> it's really made it better. But, uh, but uh, basically, the movie stars uh, was at. Um, uh, uh, Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker in Spider-Man. Emma Stone as Glenn and, and Rice Alphonse as, as, as the Dr. Crocker who has a personality conflict. He has a good side and a bad side and the bad mm-hmm. side really is not nice. Mm-hmm. But, is that like a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Yeah, but... Um, he said he, he did a, he was a good bad guy though. Yeah, and it, it, you know, mm-hmm. it features actors, you know, like Dennis Leary, you know, that basically the series ended over and Fox was a fireman. And Martin then, Sheen, Sally Field. Yeah, Sally Field. And then... Um, C. They, Thomas Howell. C. Thomas Howell basically uh, has moved up the food chain a bit because he has basically a pivotal role. In a, he's, he's there and he's not recognizable because C. Thomas Howell has been sick and he's been recovering mm-hmm. and now he put his bulk on. He looks almost like a totally different person bulked up now. But it, and, this is... <laughs> yeah, which... That was a surprise. Yeah, and he pay, he has a god awful important part in this movie. Well, obviously. you recognized him. I he looks familiar to me, yeah. but I I couldn't place him. And then also Chris Zilka was there from the Secret Circle. Yeah, who is also bulked up a lot and almost unrecognizable. <laughs> now, here okay, the, here's a, a you know here's a basic problem. The movie that we were going to see was based upon the trailers we've been watching in theaters. Yeah, see, yeah, because the trailer we saw, and the trailer we saw before, I love the trailer, and I thought, oh my gosh. Because part of it is, before we go, I, we don't read the other reviews that are out there, no. okay? So I saw the trailer, I'm like, oh my gosh, it looks like it was created in 3D, this looks phenomenal, and I'm sitting there thinking of Hugo, which was fabulous in 3D. Uh, Transformers. Which was good looking in 3D. I think that one was a conversion, wasn't it? It was conversion. But they did a fabulous job on that conversion. Okay. You can, we can tell you it off the bat. They had four different companies involved in the 3D conversion of this thing. And it yeah. was out of focus, really out of focus in parts. Well, there, there's times where you're like, 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 oh, that was the director's intention, right? And you're, yeah. th- you're thinking, but yeah, on some of those scenes, it was all out of focus and it does not look like it was intended to be out of focus. No, what happens is these are, okay, this is a competent director of photography. He's actually done another mm-hmm. 3D movie, but it was also a conversion. What happens is, is that they shoot a 3D movie as if it is 2D. You cannot do zooms in 3D and you cannot do swish pans well, in 3D. And see, part of it is you notice every time there was a style change. Oh, God. In I, can, I can tell when the, okay, I could tell when the location was changed because when the location was changed <laughs> or the people behind the camera changed, the photography changed. They may have had the same director of photography, but the man pushing the trigger was not always the same. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, there are some really glaring things like, and you, if you watch in one scene, Emma Stone goes from trim to heavy. Yeah, and that happened several times. Several Cause, times. Because you make, we were sitting there, it's like here in Southern California, it's like you don't talk during the movies, but he's going. Yeah, oh God, you know. <laughs> she, got he- she got fat, which basically is a bad, con- uh, you know, it, it, it's bad camera work and bad conversion. But, um, you know, like I said, the biggest problem with 3D conversion is they don't actually understand that you can't do the things in 3D that you can do in 2D. 3D is like a, a, a film noir movie where basically they come to the camera or the camera will the camera will track. It'll either go to the right, the left, forward, and back. Mm-hmm. It's like a fixed focal length and everything, it's all within the scene. But also, like, Transformers was done in 2D and then converted to 3D. Yeah, but the art, it was all designed to be done. The gra- okay, anything that does graphics translates well to 3D if you design it to be that way. It means it's going to really translate bad to 2D when it's made into the television version. Well, one of the parts that I thought was phenomenal was when Spider-Man went through the city. 
Yeah. Okay, which I, I love because, and then obviously, I mean, well, yes, there was blue, you know, there had to be blue screening or green screening involved. Oh, yeah, but, but it, it's really, it's the high point of the movie. But here is part of what we've got this discussion going on. Did you see what people say happened, which was the, and it basically became true IMAX only at the last 30 minutes of the film? Yeah, actually, you notice that. Um, <laughs> Yeah. See, part of it is I usually go, while I see some of this, I usually go for the movie as far as entertainment value, and that's, and I look at the style issues and some of those things where you really look at the cinematography and how it was filmed, and it was really obvious to you. Yeah, because they, uh, a lot of people are grumpy and they said, you know, we paid for an IMAX movie, why did the movie go like this in the last 30 minutes? Well, they did, you know, it... it I have no idea why they do it. They also shot it with a red camera. I Which I didn't cameras. understand, I mean, this is... And I understand that, okay, if it's a Sony slash Columbia picture... But they build 3D cameras, <laughs> folks. They know. build commercial 3D I cameras. They, you see a 3D camera, they'll, you know, they'll, we were there... So why the shoot it on red? We were attended press conference, and they were proudly talking about the 3D cameras that they're using on, what, the Sony 3D... Well, in Sony, we learned how to shoot 3D from Sony. Yeah, from they the taught Sony us, press shoot low and shoot close. And the Sony people taught us what we know about 3D. <laughs> so, so. so, and they basically have, they teach 3D to people in Los Angeles. They have a 3D court building that they teach 3D, but um, the, the movie, again, you know, uh, the, the whole trick is the movie would, uh, despite its glaring problems, would actually pay you to go see the, the movie. Well, see, here's part of it is, um, I, we did pay to we go see it. Usually, usually when we go to see an IMAX version, and you get popcorn and all that other stuff, and we see it right when it comes out. I mean, we easily drop fifty dollars. Yeah. Okay. A, we paid for it. I would go for. I would go and see it again. Yeah. You. Um. I unless it changes in the next one, I wouldn't pay to see a sequel. But at the moment, it looks like okay. Um, it's gonna. It's gonna hit at the box office because. Okay. What here, else is there? Here, to here see? is what. You want to see the new one? Okay, but. Um, here is what they're saying about, okay, this is what, it's a $215 million movie produced by a producer, by a director who has never did a god-awful big movie in his life and has not done action. But he's done an MTV music video that qualifies him to be a major director in Hollywood. Mm. So, uh, but the, the, the problem comes too is that... But why should that matter if you've got somebody in charge of cinematography that's done... No, the director, the cinematographer has actually done, this is his second 3D movie. The cinematographer, the Academy Award nominated cinematographer, mm -hmm. I mean, he uh, he's done big budget movies, so he knows what they did was they put a director, okay, let's put it this way. When you put a director in a movie that has never spent more than 50 cents in his life on a movie, mm -hmm. in with a guy that's been used to doing movies that cost $200 million, guess who's really running the movie? Mm -hmm. He knows what you're supposed to do. So they figure the directors, it basically, when a director does a big budget movie, it's basically a low budget person from television or a low budget movie maker. He's learning on the job and they surround him with people that basically, technically, know what they're doing even if he really doesn't. Yeah. So they actually, they're, they're seeing a future in him. So, I mean, Sam Remy, for instance, who did the first three Spider-Man movies, has been an action director his entire life. I mean, him and Bruce Campbell used to make action little things when they were kids. Well, you know, yeah, because I remember the other three Spider-Man movies. Those were, <laughs> yeah. were really good. Yeah, no, the, there is another conflict right there, <clears throat> is that why do a total reboot of a movie of a series that only the last one was just five years ago. You don't well, do that. <laughs> well, part of it is, is like when I said we didn't know, I, I didn't look at any reviews. I did not know it was going to be a reboot. Yeah. In fact, when we showed up there, I'm going, wait a minute, he's, he's turning into Spider Man again. <laughs> yeah. Because, <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, you know, on some of them, it just continues, right? They've already gone back through this, and this is like the next scene or next chapter. Yeah, no, but there was no reason, okay. Here's how my take is. The action sequences in this Spider-Man were just simply put in to, to carry the, the, you know, the, the, the really storyline, carry the storyline, which was about young love and heartbreak, you know, and, and learning and, and maturing. That's 
That was the theme of the movie. The action stuff was irrelevant. I mean, they spent uh, uh, 90 minutes of that movie on drama. That's not what you do with a summer action flick. You throw everything, you, you throw the kitchen sink at them. But, uh, but I, I heard this morning they, uh, that, uh, on, on one of the financial channels, this movie is guaranteed one-third of a billion dollars out of this country. Yeah. One third so, of you know, as, as we've been talking about, the U.S. is not as relevant yeah. when it comes to the market. But we, we did see a full theater. Um, yeah. Full IMAX theater, and it was actually playing at the theater we went to at four different showings. Yeah, but I question <laughs> what I saw last night. Why? I totally question it because of the fact of the people that were in the theater, for the most part, knew one another. Well, they could all be Spider-Man fans. And there were people directing traffic into seats. And it was supposedly like all somebody bought a bunch of seats. They and bought, then bought a lot of seats and then brought a, a bunch of people in. And so here's the thing: is is the movie? Did the movie actually do seven and a half million dollars at midnight showings, or did somebody mm -hmm. buy out theaters to make it look like it did better than what it did? There's my problem with the because when you're sitting there, this is what I'm watching guys doing. Uh, and they're yeah. moving people from the back up to the front. And, um, and we know, we were told we couldn't get seats that were open, that there was nobody sitting in yesterday. Mm -hmm. And people that pay, you know, they pay $50 to go to a movie <coughs> generally show up for the movie. And seats that we wanted, which were prime seats right in the middle, were vacant. Mm -hmm. And they did not fill them in because they, got, they did get filled in though. Yeah, people came, they basically moved, after the movie started, they came in and filled in those seats. Mm -hmm. But, um, but uh, I, I, I'm skeptical of box office reports anymore. <laughs> you always are skeptical of box office reports. Skeptical, you know, and, well, the other time, the major times we've seen, Avengers had a packed house, um, Harry Potter. Yeah. Well, and Avengers had a, a packed house because... They sold out that whole the day of well, movie yeah, beforehand. Yeah, basically. Of all they, the different done, uh, yeah, Marvel well, comics. You know, they had the Incredible Hulk. They mm -hmm. had Thor, and basically, the, um, they're getting ready to do that with the next upcoming uh, Batman movie, where they're going to have the first two Batman movies leading into the third Batman. Oh, movie. actually, that'll be good. But um, no, it, it just um, the, it, it it got awful slow and boring in parts. Total. This is, I mean, as I understand. This is a movie that there's two totally divergent views on I, it. Actually, I was really surprised at how many people were getting up during the movie. Yeah, there's a lot of usually, restless. Um, usually when it's an action-packed, like, I mean, you know, when you, you're really into a movie, you will not get up and go to the bathroom no matter how much. You're not going to go up and get another drink. Yeah, we'll put it this right? way. This is a movie that I went out and, and refilled three times one of those cups that the mayor of New York wants to ban. <laughs> so. uh, getting back to okay. other aspects of the movie, it's like no matter you know what you're seeing on screen or not seeing on screen, um, did you know I enjoyed the movie as far as the character. I mean, this Andrew Garfield was a different Spider-Man. Oh, he said. And then he was Tobey Maguire. Okay, he okay. Here's the trick is. Toby McGuire brought his own personality to the screen. Toby McGuire 